Hey everyone and welcome to our deep dive. Uh, today we're looking into barramundi. Barramundi. This Australian fish that honestly everyone should be eating and we've got a ton of articles here. Yeah. Plus we've got uh, Chef Brendan Mooney's recipes. He's got some good ones. And all signs are pointing in the same direction this fish needs to be on your plate. Absolutely. Ten reasons why. And we're not just talking taste. We're going to get into why this is a sustainable choice. Okay. Even how Australia's aquaculture boom is playing into this global need for food security. Inter okay, so let's get into it. One of the things that I'm seeing in these articles is that Australia's aquaculture is just like exploding. Yeah. Back in 2012, farmed Atlantic salmon actually became the number one produced seafood in the country. It overtook wild-caught sardines. Wow. What, what, what led to that? Well, you know, I think it's a combination of things, right? I mean, obviously yeah. overfishing of wild stocks plays a part in that, but also globally people want seafood more. And so aquaculture kind of stepped in to fill that gap and Australia with its pristine waters and, you know, some really innovative farming techniques, they kind of took charge. Mm. The interesting thing is that they're not just doing salmon, they're cultivating over 40 different types of seafood now. Wow. So it's not just salmon then. So that leads me to barramundi, right? Absolutely. This is the fish. And this is where things get really cool from a sustainability perspective because, okay. you know, some farmed fish, you still need a lot of wild caught fish to feed them. Oh. But barramundi farming, they're changing the game. Really? Now they're producing a kilo of barramundi with less than a kilo of wild fish input. So That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so that's really impressive. But, like, let's be honest, sustainability is great, but how does it taste? Yeah. Convince me. Oh, it's delicious. And Chef Brendan Mooney's recipes really showcase that. Okay. It's all about fresh seasonal ingredients creating these beautiful contemporary Australian dishes. Oh. Have you ever tried lemon myrtle? Lemon myrtle. It, it sounds familiar, but I don't think I've ever cooked with it. Oh, prepare for a flavor explosion. Okay. So he's got this recipe, lemon myrtle and macadamia crusted boramundi. Oh, wow. It's got toasted macadamia nuts, lemon myrtle on top of the fish, and then he serves it with this beautiful summer salad and a finger lime vinaigrette. Wow. So we're really celebrating those native Australian flavors. I mean, that sounds amazing. Yeah. I do love macadamia nuts. Yeah. So you're telling me this this contemporary Australian cuisine, it's not just like shrimp on the barbie. No, it's so much more. Okay. It's like a fusion of all these fresh local ingredients, a lot of Asian influence, you know, and it's all about those bright, bold flavors, unique spices, and like a real focus on whatever's in season. Sure. Mooney's panko crusted barramundi with Asian slaw and a sesame ginger dressing is a perfect example. Okay. You've got crispy panko tangy slaw, that perfect sweet, salty, sour balance. It's just a flavor adventure. Well, you're making me hungry. I'm adding that to my list. You should. Well, things to cook, for yeah. sure. Okay, but what about, you know, for those nights where I'm looking for something a little bit more classic, does barramundi work for like fish and chips? Of course. Okay. Mooney has this recipe. It's a beer battered barramundi with chips and tartar sauce. Okay. But this is like next level fish and chips. And his secret is he uses ice cold beer for the batter and he lets it rest for 30 minutes. Wow. And it makes the most incredibly light and crispy batter. Okay. There's definitely a theme here. Hmm. Mooney just knows how to elevate like even the simple dishes with these little extra things. He really does. Like little touches. He's got so many other barramundi recipes too. His creativity just shines through. Really? He's got a spiced coconut barramundi with a mango salsa and a lime dressing, you know, for those tropical vibes. Okay. He's got a duca crusted barramundi with roasted vegetable salad and a tahini dressing. Okay. Kind of earthy and aromatic. Okay. And then he's even got an herb and parmesan crusted barramundi with a Mediterranean salad and a balsamic glaze for like when you want something fresh and vibrant. Wow. So six completely different dishes, all using barramundi. Yeah. Okay. That's incredible. So it really is versatile. <laughs> I'm sold on the taste. Good. But back to the sustainability thing, mm -hmm. how can I be sure that I'm actually choosing barramundi that's been farmed responsibly? That's a great question. And that's something to think about with any seafood you buy. Yeah. Look for those certifications and labels that tell you it's sustainable. You know, a great resource is the Australian Marine Conservation Society. Okay. They have this Good Fish project, mm. and they've got this really comprehensive guide that helps you make informed choices. So they do the research so I don't have to. Exactly. I like that. Okay, so beyond, like, my own individual choices, mm. isn't there a bigger picture here we keep hearing about, this global food security and needing to find sustainable protein sources? Right. Where does Barramundi fit into all of that? That's where it gets really interesting okay. because as the population grows globally, 
the demand for protein is going to explode. Right. And traditional methods like land-based agriculture, they're already straining our resources. Mm. So sustainable aquaculture with species like varamundi leading the way, it's a potential solution. You know, like it's that. a way to produce this high quality protein with a much smaller environmental footprint. So it's not just about enjoying a meal. No. It's about like being part of a solution to this global challenge. Exactly. And that's what makes this conversation so exciting. You know, yeah. by picking sustainable seafood like barramundi, we're not just pleasing our taste buds. Mm. We're making this conscious decision to support a healthier planet. OK, I'm feeling pretty inspired. Good. But I, I've got to be honest. I've always been a little bit skeptical of farmed fish. Yeah. I think I have this image in my head of like crowded fish farms and, you know, negative impacts on the environment. Sure. Is that just outdated thinking? Well, you know, it's understandable to have those concerns. Yeah. There have been examples of poorly managed aquaculture operations. Right. But the industry is evolving so rapidly and responsible farmers, they're prioritizing sustainability now. Okay. They're using these really innovative techniques to try and minimize the impact on the environment. And they're working hand in hand with scientists and conservationists to make sure that they're taking care of these ecosystems in the long run. So it's not all doom and gloom. No, not all. There are people out there who are doing things the right way. Absolutely. And the more that we as consumers demand sustainable options, the more the industry is going to have to shift in that direction. Right. OK, so I'm feeling a lot more optimistic now. Good. But before we get too carried away, let's just break down those 10 reasons to buy and cook barrel. Oh, I thought I'd a few. Yeah. I want to hear it all. You got it. So let's start with the most obvious one. Yeah. Reason number one, it's got to be sustainability. Right. We've talked about how barramundi farming is getting more efficient. You know, they're using less wild fish mm -hmm. for feed. They're trying to minimize that impact on the environment. Yeah, that's a big one for me. Okay, what's number two? Versatility. Okay. Barramundi, it's like a culinary chameleon. Okay. You can do so much with it, you know? Whether you want something light and delicate or rich and flavorful, there's a barramundi dish out there for everyone. Right. And Chef Brendan Mooney's recipes really show that off he's got everything from Asian-inspired dishes to, like, classic comfort food, all featuring this amazing fish. I'm starting to think that Chef Mooney should get, like, a commission or something from Australian barramundi farmers. Maybe he should. Okay, versatility, that's great. Yeah. What about the taste, though? Like, let's be honest, some fish can be kind of bland. Oh, no, no, barramundi is anything but bland. Uh -huh. It's got this beautiful, delicate flavor. It's a little bit sweet. It goes with so many different ingredients. Hmm. It's not overpowered. You know, it doesn't mask other flavors, but it's not so mild that you can't taste it. Right. It's like that perfect balance. Okay, you're really making my mouth water now. Flavor, versatility, sustainability. What's next on the list? Texture. Oh. Barramundi has this really nice, firm, flaky texture that just stands up to all kinds of cooking methods. Okay. You can grill it, bake it, pan fry it, steam. It, it always comes out perfect. And that makes it pretty easy to cook, I imagine. Exactly. Which is always a plus. I'm not the most skilled chef in the world, so I appreciate a fish that's not going to fall apart on me. Exactly. Which leads us to number five, ease of preparation. Okay. Barramundi is super forgiving. Mm. You don't have to be a master chef to whip up something delicious. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. But let's not forget about health. Yeah. You know, I'm always trying to get those nutrients in. Of course. Especially those good fats. Yeah. How does barramundi stack up in that department? It's a nutritional powerhouse. Okay. It's got tons of protein, omega-3 fatty acids, all those essential vitamins and minerals. Okay. And omega-3s, they're so important for heart health, brain function, even reducing inflammation. It's good for my heart. <laughs> my brain, my overall well-being. I like it. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered sustainability, versatility, flavor, texture, easy to cook, and healthy. What else? Well, for one, it's a great way to support local farmers and businesses. Okay. You know, if you're choosing Australian barramundi, you're investing in sustainable practices right here at home. Yeah. I mean, I love the idea of voting with my dollar. Absolutely. Supporting businesses that are doing things the right way. And Often supporting local means that you're getting fresher, higher quality seafood. Right. So it's a win-win. It is a win-win. Yeah. Okay, so we're at seven reasons. What else have you got? Okay, so this one might seem obvious, but it's worth saying barramundi is quick to cook. Okay. Whether you're grilling, baking, or pan frying, it cooks up super fast. Perfect for those busy weeknights when I don't have a lot of time, but I still want something healthy and home cooked. Exactly. Okay. And speaking of families, barramundi is also super kid-friendly. 
Oh, okay. It's got that mild flavor, flaky texture. Even picky eaters love it. That's a big one. Yeah. I'm always trying to get my kids to try new things. Yeah. And, you know, without just giving them chicken nuggets every night. Of course. Barmundi is a great way to introduce them to seafood. You can crumb it, bake it, serve it with their favorite dipping sauces. So many options. So many options. All right. So we're at nine reasons now. What's the tenth and final reason why we should all be eating barramundi? Simply put, it's delicious. Okay. There's something so special about the taste and the texture of this fish. Yeah. It's delicate. It's versatile. It's satisfying. It's just a really great culinary experience that I think everyone should try. I couldn't agree more. Okay, so we've got 10 compelling reasons to buy and cook barramundi. We do. But now I'm kind of curious about the aquaculture industry as a whole. Yeah. We've talked about barramundi farming. Right. But there are so many other types of seafood out there. Yeah. What are some of the different methods that they use in aquaculture? And how do those differ in terms of their sustainability? That's a great question. Aquaculture is such a fascinating field, yeah. and it's a lot more diverse than people realize. Okay. So let's break down some of those common aquaculture systems. So one common system is sea cage aquaculture. Sea cage aquaculture. Yeah. So these are those big netted enclosures. Okay. They float in estuaries or embayments, and the fish are raised inside. Okay. And they rely on natural currents to bring oxygen and take away waste. Ah, the infamous sea cages. I've heard some negative things about those. Yeah. What are the sustainability concerns there? Yeah, the concerns are valid. You know, if they're not managed properly, there is a chance for waste discharge. Right. And that can affect the ecosystems around them. But like any farming practice, it really depends on the specifics. Okay. Responsible sea cage farming. You know, they pick the location really carefully. They don't put too many fish in there to avoid overcrowding. Right. And they're always checking the water quality. So it's about balance. Exactly. Finding that balance between production and making sure it's environmentally responsible. Are there systems that are even more controlled than that? Absolutely. So there's land-based tank and pond aquaculture. Okay. These use tanks or ponds either fully enclosed or sometimes partially open to release treated wastewater. Okay. And you can actually do those inland near the coast or even integrate them with other agriculture. Hold on. Integrated aquaculture. What is that like, raising fish and plants together? You got, so aquaponics is one example. Okay. Where the fish waste actually fertilizes the plants. Wow. It's a closed loop system, super efficient, and it minimizes waste. It's like nature's own recycling program. That's amazing what other systems are out there. Well, there's also stick rack or line aquaculture. Okay. This is mainly used for shellfish like oysters, mussels, and scallops. Hmm. They use these structures that are either suspended in the water or on the seafloor. Right. Now, shellfish are inherently sustainable to farm. Really? Yeah. They're filter feeders. Okay. Which means they're actually cleaning the water as they grow, and they don't need any extra feed. So it's a double win for the environment. Absolutely. Cleaning the water, and they don't need feed. Okay, what about on the higher tech side of things? Yeah. Well, then we've got recirculating aquaculture systems. Okay. So these use indoor tanks, and they actually recycle the water. Okay. And they treat the waste through these filters. Mm. So it's super intensive, but it gives you a lot of control. So that sounds really ideal for the environment. I would imagine there are some trade-offs, though. Yeah, the main one is energy consumption. Right. These systems can use quite a bit of energy. So it sounds like each system has its pros and cons. Yeah. And the best one really depends on the species and where you are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's all about finding the right fit and constantly innovating yeah. to improve those methods and make the whole industry more sustainable. Right. It's like a giant puzzle just finding the perfect pieces to create that sustainable seafood system. Speaking of pieces, are some just inherently more sustainable to farm than others? That's a great question. Yeah. A key factor is what we call trophic level. Trophic level. Yeah, it's basically where the organism sits in the food chain. Okay. So think of it like this barramundi. They're omnivores. Right. They eat plants and animals. So they're more sustainable than fish that are higher up on the food chain that need to eat other fish to survive. Right. And then you've got those shellfish that we talked about. Yeah. You know, filter feeders, they're like the sustainability superstars. They don't need extra food. So choosing lower trophic level fish like boramundi, that's a step in the right direction. Absolutely. Okay. What else should we be thinking about? The origin of the fish. 
Okay. Picking native species reduces the chance of diseases spreading or escapees that could disrupt the local ecosystems. Right. So Australian borough money, we're good on that front too. Right. What about those certifications we were talking about earlier? Those are so important. Yeah. Make sure you're looking for labels from organizations like the Australian Marine Conservation Society. Okay. They do all that research for you. Right. They evaluate the fisheries and farms and they look at the environmental impact. It's like having a personal guide to navigate the world of sustainable seafood because it can get confusing. It really can. Of all the different labels and everything. Yeah, absolutely. But with a little research and help from some reputable organizations, we can all make better choices. Okay, so this has been so enlightening. Yeah. We've covered a lot different aquaculture systems factors that affect sustainability. Right. And of course, those 10 delicious reasons to cook with barramundi. Yes. But... It's important to remember that sustainability, it's not just about the environment. Yeah. It's about people, too. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, how does aquaculture affect the communities where it's happening socially and economically? Right. That's a really crucial part of the discussion. So let's talk about that. What are some of the potential benefits and the challenges? Well, aquaculture can be a really great thing for rural and coastal economies. Okay. It creates jobs, it supports local businesses, and it can even help with food security in places where people don't have easy access to other protein. Right. It can be a real lifeline for some communities. That's amazing. But, like we were saying, there are always two sides to the story. Right. So what are some potential downsides that we need to be aware of? Yeah, what are those? Well, one concern is that local communities or traditional fishing practices might be displaced. Okay. If it's not managed properly, aquaculture can encroach on areas that are really important for people's livelihoods right. and cultural traditions. So responsible development, it needs to consider the people. Absolutely. As much as the planet. Yeah. What about working conditions in these aquaculture facilities? Yeah, that's another really important thing to think about. You know, we need to make sure that workers are being treated fairly. Right. That they're safe and that they're earning a living wage. Yeah, sustainable aquaculture. It has to be good for people and the planet. Exactly. I'm glad we're talking about these things. Yeah. It's easy to get caught up in the environmental side of things and forget that there are people involved. Absolutely. Are there any guidelines or frameworks out there to help promote responsible aquaculture practices? Thankfully, yes. So there are organizations like the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO. Okay. They've created guidelines for responsible aquaculture. They lay out best practices for minimizing the impact on the environment okay. and promoting social responsibility. Mm -hmm. And a lot of countries, including Australia, have their own regulations and certification programs, too. That's good to hear. It sounds like there's a real push toward a more holistic and ethical approach to aquaculture. I think so. There's a lot of exciting new technologies and practices being developed yeah. to make the industry more sustainable and improve the social and economic benefits as well. It sounds like an amazing field to be working in. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of barramundi and sustainable aquaculture, what are the key takeaways for our listeners? I think the big one is that barramundi isn't just delicious and versatile, right. but it's also a sustainable choice. Yeah. And it could even help address global food security. We've explored all the different methods of aquaculture. Yeah. The importance of doing it responsibly. Right. And the impacts of those choices on the environment and communities. It's a complex issue, but it really comes down to making informed decisions. Picking seafood that aligns with your values. Exactly. And supporting an industry that's working towards a better future. We hope this deep dive has got you thinking and, yeah. and giving you the knowledge to make conscious choices. So next time you're at the seafood counter, think about barramundi. Absolutely. Try one of those amazing recipes from Chef Brendan Mooney. And remember, every choice we make can have a positive impact. Thanks for diving in with us. Yeah, thanks for listening, everyone. Until next time.